Okay, Sami, uh, what are we going to do today? Yeah, so uh, we're here at, at Pet3, SF3D. Um, we'll be doing some bulldozer overclocking. Um, got a few FX CPUs here, um, a couple different high end graphics, Radeon uh, 6990, as well as a patch of the uh, Asus uh, 580s. Um, we'll be using the, uh, the Asus Crosshair 5 990 FX motherboards. So two of those prepped here, ready to go. Um, everything is powered with the uh, with Antec 1200 watt power supplies. Yeah. So what's the first thing we are going to do today? I uh, will start off with, with just testing the CPU on on heavily threaded tests, seeing how far we can push uh, on the cores, how far we can push the uh, the Nordbridge memory. Uh, just getting a feel of how, how things perform at those uh, L2 cooled frequencies and. Uh, Go from there. Okay, let's see how it goes. Yeah, it should be it should be fun. So let's boot the system with uh, 7.8 GHz. Let's see, some is trying 8, flat 8. I'm trying to boot up. <laughs> so 7.8 was okay. So you can get into Windows with two cores enabled. Yeah, 7.7. .7. So how did the first part of the testing go? <laughs> um, it, it went pretty much as expected uh, for you know for CPU-Z. Uh, we were you know seeing over 8 gigahertz on I think on both systems. So yeah, so far so good. Uh, it's time to try and run some uh, some benchmarks now. Okay. We have a competition here, we have the same platform, same graphics card, the CPU, mm -hmm. and who is winning at the moment? No comment. No problem. <laughs> Some is struggling quite a lot, but it's usual. So, there are some improvements? Yes, definitely. We, uh, we switched from looking for low-width CPUs to looking for high-width CPUs, and that seems to uh, have improved the clocks. So 
I mean, you've got almost 7 gigahertz on. Yeah, nearly, but you're running only 1.74. 1.75, yeah, 1.75, and it's uh, it's already at 6.67, so better than the previous chip was was able to do with max voltage. Yeah. And here's another milestone. Um, so all eight cores and over 7 gigahertz, 7072 to be exact, and uh, just ran a Cinebench 9.5. Let's try it again. And all good. CPU only at 205 volts. No. Not bad. So we have some interesting results here. We have 7.2 gigahertz and the voltage is 2.0. Eight. Seven or eight, yeah. and previously we were able to run the Cinebench, the older version, and the, was it 3D Mark 11 as well? Yes. The physics. Yes, 3D Mark 11. Physics. Yeah, that was quite amazing. Yeah. The Cinebench, the 11.5 has, but we didn't get the result. So let's try the Cinebench yeah, again. Yeah, another shot. So this. But what, what about the power output or the heat output from the CPU? Well, we can only guess, but um, it's, it's quite high. Yeah. Something like four. Probably like 400 watts for for the CPU under full load uh, because of the high uh, high voltage, 208. So it's probably pulling close to 40 amps from the uh, CPU, 12 volt rail. So 2075 we just tried and basically ran through the test but just failed at the end so the only difference is uh, voltage has been increased by another two small steps so 208 now and 7.2 gigahertz 8 cores yeah and the heat load is just just crazy the LM2 uh, flat temperature it's dropping, it's 175, and there we go. <laughs> <laughs> and we had a crash. I don't touch the back up. So this design is pretty good for the new bulldozer CPUs. So we can agree on that. Easily. Very good for high load. So now there is uh, 7.2. Now there is actually 7.2. Yeah, this time you remember to change the, the clock speed. So 7.2. CPU for gigahertz and B and to the mark below the physics test and all eight cores. And this was a good run as well, so it should be. Yes. Almost 11,300. 